I don't do a lot of TV, but I am going in now to do a Fox News hit for Fox News Primetime, and uh, I'll show you how it goes. I'm not nervous when I give talks in front of people, but I am sometimes nervous when I go on television, uh, when I do interviews, because it's live, and if you mess it up, uh, not just a couple people in the room, but potentially tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of people could be watching or listening, but I try to walk through this the way the Stoics do, which is like literally what's the worst case scenario, right? You make a mistake, people laugh at you. Um, okay, so what? You're not gonna meet most of those people. You'll never know what they think or care. It won't affect you. I just try to remind myself what I control is that I go up there and I do my best. What I control is that I prepared. What I control is that I'm sincere about what I'm having to say. If someone's out to get you, if someone treats you rudely on air or it turns hostile, Okay, you'll figure it out. You, you're good on the fly, but you can't let it intimidate you. You can't let it prevent you from doing it. You just gotta go. The door is locked, so I had to call. I worried I messed up the time, which would uh, not be good, but now they are coming down to get me. Behind the scenes, it's all very glamorous. <laughs> When we think of courage, we think of a firefighter running into a burning building or a police officer running toward danger. But now, at a time when institutions across the country are targeting free speech, moral courage is what is needed now more than ever. It's a willingness to put your butt on the line, to stand up for what you believe, and to risk something for something. Ryan Holiday is one of the world's best-selling philosophers and has written a new book, Courage is Calling. Ryan, thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, I have read your book with uh, great interest, and we had a chance to talk about it on uh, my podcast recently. Uh, I wonder in this moment, for a lot of Americans who feel overwhelmed by what's going on in the world, overwhelmed by what's going on in their own communities, how they can reconsider and refocus and bring more courage into their own lives. Yeah, I mean, I, your distinction between physical mo courage and moral courage is really important. Um, it's not just our brave soldiers. It's not just our uh, pioneering scientists. It's also the courage of, of ordinary people. It's the courage to stand up for what you believe in. It's the courage to, to help out a neighbor. It's the, it's, a courage, it's the courage to put yourself out there uh, and be willing to bear and face the consequences that may come with that. Mm -hmm. I think that one of the aspects of your book that is uh, really fascinating is this distinction that we make in, in the way that we appreciate courage. There are many small moments that you talk about in your book that are reflective of, of very important things that happen because of single moments in history where someone was courageous in that moment. What's one of the examples in particular that stood out to you as you were researching it? Yeah, you look at someone like Winston Churchill or you look at Charles de Gaulle. These are two men uh, not very long ago who put the, the, the future of the free world on their backs and took a stand and they changed history. And I know it's cliche now. I know it's, it's, it's in, in cynical history classes, the idea that an individual can change history, that someone can reshape or, or, or redirect the future of the world in a positive direction that, that's verboten, right? Everything is systemic, everything is structural, and, and those things may or may not exist. But it is true that an individual can change the future, and we've seen that happen. And I, th I guess I would add to that, if you don't think it's possible, you're right, at least for you. You will not be the person who changes the future. There are a lot of Americans right now who feel like they have to assert some kind of a control and they don't know how to do it, that the world has kind of spun off of its axis in the last year and a half uh, or more, uh, that things have gotten out of hand, but they don't know how to take that first step. Tell, talk to me about finding the courage to do something, even on a small level, even on the local level, when they feel so overwhelmed by what they see in the national news. One thing that centers me is, is reminding myself that actually I do know what to do. Because we come from a long line, an unbroken line of ancestors who survived things just like this. Not just the 1918 pandemic, not just the Great Depression or the First World War or the Second World War, but we are, we are descendants of those people literally and figuratively. And so as I feel like the world is spinning out of my control, which it, it has been the last two years, I try to go, 
I come from sturdy peasant stock, as James Baldwin <laughs> famously said. Uh, I, I am the heir to that tradition. And I'm, as the Queen said during the middle of the pandemic, uh, I want to prove that I am the descendants of those people. I want to make them proud. And the first step in that is not freaking out, right? Is not making it worse and not accepting complete and total powerlessness, but deciding I'm gonna focus on where I can make a positive difference for my family, for my community, and for my country. Mm -hmm. You know, Ryan, uh, I think that your books are so important at this moment, and, and I'd recommend that people check them out as well in terms of uh, the, the Stoic program that you've really been pushing in, in recent years. Uh, just very quickly, how has that helped guide you through this pandemic moment? Yeah, the stoicism has always been popular in moments of adversity and difficulty and turmoil, from the decline and fall of the Roman Empire to the American Civil War and, and of course, the American founding. I think stoicism at its core is this idea that we don't control what has happened, but we control how we respond. And mm -hmm. I've just tried to focus on that time and time again. I might not like this. I might not like that. I might be concerned by this. I might be anxious about that. But I'm going to focus on what's in my control, mm -hmm. what I can do right now. And I'm going to use this as an opportunity to act in accordance of the Stoic virtues, which are courage, temperance, justice, and wisdom. Thank you so much, Ryan, for joining me tonight. It was an honor. Of course. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a good night. How'd you, th how'd you think it went? Really well, I think. I think so, too. Yeah, I thought it was good. He did? So, so it was weird. I couldn't see my face or him, so I could oh, only he hear. Was, he like laughed at your joke. Oh, really? Okay, great. All right, well, I'm gonna head home. I'll see you in a bit. Bye-bye.